So hello everybody. Um, my name is Dr. Isabel Hertner. I'm a senior lecturer at King's College and I'm one of the editors of Politics UK, the 10th edition. Today um, I have the pleasure to introduce you to Michelle Gibson. Michelle is a local councillor in uh, the Council of Spelthorne, which is in Surrey in England. So um, Michelle has kindly volunteered um, to answer a few questions and um, let's get started. So welcome, uh, Michelle. You have been elected since um, 2019, May since 2019. So you've now been in the job for um, a bit over two years. So oh, yeah. <laughs> my first question for you is, why did you decide to become a local councillor? Apart from actually being um, encouraged by a couple of my friends who were in the local council and also in the Conservative Party, when I investigated it further, really, at the end of the day, a councillor is a conduit between residents and the officials in the council. So when residents actually need to have a voice, the councillors are the people that they come to, and hopefully the council has got enough of uh, some form of um, influence to be able to help any issues that arise. And also, while there is a customer complaints uh, functionality within the council, I'm not sure that it touches the places that really need to be touched in addressing uh, certain residence issues. So the councillor is the one that will actually highlight those issues and bring them to the council when it's necessary. And also there are different functions within the council that are uh, Hang on, sorry about that. There, there are different functions within the council that actually uh, are the planning, for example, um, various elements like that. So, sorry, my phone. Uh, yeah, so if, if um, there are areas that really need to be looked at and ways the town and the borough need to be taken forward, the councillors are usually the ones who get together within the council talk to the officers and then see how to take things forward. So yeah, um, you know, short story is the conduit between residents and the council officers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, uh, have uh, other ideas. Do you often get approached by residents when you meet them in the streets and they know you and they say, oh, Michelle, this is the problem here. Does it happen a lot? I actually said to someone, um, fairly recently that it's a little bit like being a movie star in that when you put yourself out there, you put yourself in a position and you actually have people coming to you and looking at you for a certain uh, public service. You need to actually make sure that you're there and make sure that you represent uh, yourself because at the end of the day, that is, that is exactly it. People come to you, they see you in a particular role and they come to you for certain things, so yes. Very much so. And I do see many, many uh, residents, uh, pretty much every day, I see at least one or two residents who, who stop me in the street, stop me on the towpath and uh, talk about certain ideas or issues or uh, maybe news that they heard they want to know, is it true? Things like that. So yeah. <laughs> and um, if I may ask, what are the common broad issues that uh, residents bring up with you when they meet you? Um, about local politics, what is it in general? Well, until recently, um, until recently, one of the roles I had was being vice chair of the planning committee. So there would be some residents who have issues with their planning applications, they have questions, they want to ask, you know, how do things work? Who in the council could they speak to? Could I highlight a particular issue that they've got? Uh, say they've got a planning application in and it's being delayed, etc. So at the end of the day, residents, all they really want is a nice quiet life where things work. Is your rubbish being collected? Are your any uh, applications that you have in, are they being dealt with uh, within the time scales that they're told? Are their expectations being met with the responsibilities the borough uh, council has for, excuse me, for the residents? And that's really it, very, very simple. Sometimes it gets a bit more complicated than that, but people just want to know that their services are being uh, carried out and their expectations met. And that's pretty much it, as far as I can see. I think sometimes politics does cloud uh, the issue and does complicate the issue in my mind occasionally. Mm -hmm. 
thank you very much. Let's move on to our next question. So what makes your job interesting? People, people make my job interesting. I think really um, there are certain responsibilities within the council and I'll give you an, I'll give you an example. When people vote for a politician, whether it's uh, someone in national uh, politics or whether it's local politics, they're voting for a person that's usually part of a party. So they don't actually have any information about that particular person per se. So when you get a number of uh, disparate people uh, who are actually voted for within, for example, a council, what you get is a melee of different uh, roles, responsibilities, uh, experience and knowledge. And it's up to the leaders within the council to try and evaluate the resource that they've got in those councillors and in those officers mm -hmm. to make sure that they all work together. And that doesn't always happen effectively because it's very difficult very 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 different different people trying to do different things with different ambitions different opinions different uh agendas and the whole point is that the leadership's got to be really quite strong to point those people in in the right direction and that is towards their residents party politics should not really be part of uh local um council in my mind and that's my personal opinion uh, but it is, uh, I think it's a very, very important thing to keep politics separate from local council so that the most important element in that council are the residents and you work towards what the, will make the residents uh, happy. They pay the salaries of the officers and the councillors and they're the ones who really should be concentrated on. However, I think occasionally this focus is lost by uh, people who do actually have their own agendas. They wanna see uh, things go in the way they want them to. So on one hand, for example, we might have some green initiatives, but there's always got to be a balance. You can't just have daisies and roses growing everywhere. You've got to have some form of a balance when there's a green initiative. And on the other hand, people want to build, build, build because we need God knows how many thousands of homes. But at the same time, you've got to balance that with the, the ideas of the green initiatives and have a balanced view and not allow people to go off on one tangent or the other. And that's something, again, to my mind, doesn't always happen effectively. So there is occasionally an imbalance in certain uh, focuses. But um, as I said, you know, the councillors do, uh, when they keep the, the residents in mind, do battle to keep the focus and to keep a balance, but it's a constant battle. It is really a constant battle of minds. <laughs> it sounds like a very interesting and very dynamic um, job that you have. It's yeah. extraordinarily dynamic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, thank you. Um, I think perhaps the last question, let's, let's have a look at that. So in your mind, is British democracy working well at the moment? Um, um, I am not sure it is working well. And the only reason I can say that is because I've never really lived in any other form of uh, political environment. So I've only ever lived in a democratic environment. And personally, I think it's my own personal opinion, it's the best environment to be. Because if I look outside of the box and I look at uh, countries like, for example, Myanmar, they don't actually have a democracy right now. They'd love to. I mean, the, the people, residents would love to have one, but there are people in the um, upper echelon of the leadership who have different opinions and they're pushing their opinions. So the people of Myanmar don't actually have uh, an avenue for democracy. If you look at countries like that, uh, maybe Syria, uh, you know, as another example, there are, there are countries at the moment that you can point to and I think if, uh, for example, people who don't vote and use the vote that has been so hard fought to get them, if they don't use that vote and if they don't use that avenue for uh, maintaining a democracy, I think that they're in danger <clears throat> of losing it, um, which would be a great, great uh, tragedy. So I think young people in particular need to utilize the vote that people in history have actually died in order to give them the opportunity to have. Um, if 
young people don't appreciate it because they don't see that things are moving in the direction they would like to things to move in then what they could do is maybe at the moment the only the only avenue they have is to be represented in parliament and the only way you're going to be represented in parliament is to vote if you don't vote and you just want to run onto the streets to do uh you know demonstrate for certain things that you believe in i'm not convinced that that is particularly the way to to go because then how is your voice actually heard you make a disturbance you get in the news for a short period of time and then it's lost so I, I think that um, young people need to be maybe um, either educated or made a little bit more aware of what democracy really is and how uh, they can utilize it to their advantage. But if you don't vote, you don't actually have a voice. And then that is, that is something that it would be a disaster if it were lost, in my opinion. So um, to answer your question, is democracy working at the moment? I would say yes, but it's in danger. And uh, I think people need to stop taking it for granted and start utilizing it effectively. So that's really where I stand on that one. Thank you very much, Michelle. That uh, I think that is a good closing statement, isn't it? Um, I do. I do. And, and a message out to all our, to, well, to our students really, um, to use your voice and, and vote. Um, yes, yes. And I, you know, I'm happy to talk about um, local council to anybody who'd be interested in, in, you know, asking me personally. So they'd be very welcome to contact me and to have a bit of a chat. Um, it, it is, it is actually very eye-opening to be in local council. I had never done it before. I've worked in many uh, corporate organisations. Um, uh, local council is 100% different from being in a corporate organisation. I can tell you. I can't believe it. Thank you very much.